So uh, this is me at age three. My mom thought I would be the best angel for her, but I turned out quite the contrary. So growing up in a household with all girls, it was quite uh, ridiculous. And uh, being the only boy, I had a lot of attention. And it was uh, crazy because everybody loved me, and especially my grandparents. And when there were gifts coming home, I had first dibs on it. And of course, my sisters fought for the right and then beat me up when nobody was looking. But uh, somehow in all this chaos, the toys broke, and then we all sat together in the night fixing the toys again. And uh, if it didn't work in the next morning, it's OK. We just made believe that it worked, and then we still played with it. And in one such exploration of, mine, of how things work, I took a RC helicopter planes, uh, helicopter plane, wow, helicopter's motor, and then put it in my sister's head, and then turned the motor on. The sight was not very pretty, so and, uh, all of my creative explorations only landed me in trouble. So uh, then uh, grew up a little bit where uh, cricket was the religion, and uh, of course, uh, Sachin and Dravids and all of them were gods. So where uh, we had only equipment, uh, limited equipment, and uh, we couldn't uh, exhaust them uh, every day and everywhere. So we had to make. So some of us chose to make our own cricket bats and balls with the cork and all of that. So that was another creative exploration where we had to use uh, uh, material like coconut uh, leaf stock and uh, any wood that we can uh, lay our hands on. And of course, uh, going to the next level, which was 10th grade, and then my dad thinks that uh, I have to get to the grill and then uh, remove the cable connection at home. And then because he thinks that TV is a bad influence while studying, so that's what he did. But uh, luckily for me, uh, the tinkerer in me locked myself in the room upstairs in the pretext of studying and then only finding everyday objects to hack them and then tap our neighboring wire, uh, neighbor's wire to get the cable back on and then do all of that gimmick. And then, of course, uh, I had my thread ceremony when I was uh, 17. Uh, I don't look 17 there, but yes. Uh, and uh, became the goody two-shoes boy. And then uh, where daddy said that, uh, like, you know, chant your prayers, did all of that, counted my blessings, never asked any questions like all the other boys at that age anyway. And uh, then it was time for engineering. My dad told me that, well, you have to be an engineer because uh, engineering is awesome. So I said, OK, but too many questions in my head. But still said, let's do this. And uh, joined the herd of mechanical engineers, yeah? And uh, where uh, in academic institution, it is enforced that you watch, but you don't touch. You write for more marks. But if you start asking questions, you're the rebel, and you're thrown out of the class. So all of this happened. and. Uh, of course, with all of this academic training, yeah, where we had to uh, look at the next big step, of course, it's America, right? So joined, joined a mechanical engineering degree at Clemson University, where uh, suddenly my whole world started shifting, toppling upside down, because my faculty started asking questions like, and making comments like, stop studying, start making something. And then saying, stop note taking, ask questions. And I was like, what the hell is happening? So I then go back to my brethren at uh, uh, the university, back to the uh, Indian population, and say, Macha, what's happening? What's going on? And all of this. They say, chill, maga. We are Indians, OK. We'll get through all of this. But placement, java ga. So it means that when are we getting placed? When are we getting our jobs? So we're just looking at the next thing and the next thing and forget. And uh, in all of this tension on one end, on the other side, I have my uh, mom on Skype saying, what did you cook today uh, while preparing the next batch of rasam powder to reach me? So these are the challenges. And uh, of course, uh, call it karma or call it luck. Uh, I landed a job at uh, 3D Systems, uh, building 3D printers in the US. And uh, it was a good job. It was a dream job. And uh, I really enjoyed with more time and money on my hands, uh, not knowing what to do. So new hobbies and new explorations began, experiences came. And that's when I kind of hit a high note in my life with a white American girlfriend. So uh, which uh, came in its, all of its glory and everything, uh, but soon came crashing down in eight months. And uh, she left me devastated with these three questions that is still haunting me today. So she said, why are you doing what you're doing? And then she also said, what would you be if you were not an engineer? That shook the shit out of me. And where would you want to go from here? So these were the questions that I was devastated with. And I came back to India as a rebel. 
and uh, pretty much that's a not a happy sight if you're in a Brahmin household. Uh, I think my friend can <laughs> sympathize with that. And uh, there I was, uh, there I came back bidding goodbye and then locked myself up in the room for days to come. Uh, thinking about writing a book, wanted to write a book based on my recent explorations in mythology, in Veda, in science fiction, in uh, science magazines, journals, documentaries, and of course, right, the platform called TED, watching a bunch of TED videos which messes you up. <laughs> and then all of this was happening and pretty much was an age of reasoning and a renaissance for myself. And that's when I kind of uh, landed in a new place, thanks to my sister who was concerned and who wanted to give me something and think that she could put some sense back into me. So she made me introduced to uh, a bunch of people who uh, were working on some very creative concepts. Uh, I worked with teachers, I worked with, uh, worked with students, I worked with academics, I worked with parents, children, a lot of different demographies that gave confidence and excitement back into my life. And then that is where uh, my new life started where it was a calling and uh, uh, I was talking so much to my boss that I fell in love with her and uh, that was uh, Anupama, she's here today and uh, so it's, it's amazing because once you have the right person now you know what to talk to and then we started talking about ideas, we started talking about how we are working towards different concepts and finally I could be an engineer that would engineer something, right? So. That is how we got started with uh, some courage and some uh, finance that we had to scrounge through with our resources. We got started with Workbench Projects. So Workbench Projects is a maker space, it's a fab lab, it's a co-working space, it's a creative space. And of course, like any other startup, we started out in Anu's dad's garage. So eventually sc scaling to a public place where we have reclaimed a public space that is right underneath the metro station, thanks to the support of BMRCL. So we are right in the heart of the city, right underneath the Halasuru metro station. And some may call this space as a hobby space, some may call it as a space with uh, tools, machines, and mentors. But Anu and I, we think that this is a space that is an ecosystem to come up with responsible innovations for the next uh, future. And of course, the philosophy here is quite simple. We, we did an art installation also that says uh, making is not a crime uh, before we even started constructing the entire space right underneath the station. And the whole idea is that we have to start embracing or building an aptitude to kind of uh, not fear failure. And then we have to start looking at leveraging collaborations to begin investing in one's own idea. So that is where uh, we said that yes, we have to have the space we got started, and the space invited many kinds of people. It invited artists, engineers, academics, researchers, investors, different kinds of people trying to come and see what, there, what is it in there. And then, of course, this is part of a larger movement called as the maker movement, which has come to stay and which is the next big movement that is happening. And we saw a couple of videos from uh, Ted today which talked about the movement. So it is a call for you guys to be that second guy, to be equal, to be the leader and take this movement forward. And it is also being called as the next industrial revolution where things are going to change at a very rapid uh, state. We are all makers at heart, like the journey that I've had, we are all tinkerers, we are all makers at heart, irrespective of our academic training. And what are these makers? These are the makers who do not believe in binaries, like, you know, there's no zero and one. Of course there are, as endpoints, but then there's everything in between. And makers are multidisciplinary, they are multidimensional. You can be an artist and an engineer at the same time, like one of the earlier speakers, you can be that. And you can be an app maker and a mechanic at the same time. You can be a musician and a gardener at the same time. You can be a homemaker and an inventor. All of these combinations and many more. So that is where we are saying that there is no one dimension to this personality. And then a maker is not either or. It's everything and beyond. So what would be the perks of being a maker? So if you had to look at the future jobs and the future things that are coming up, you are going to be a maker, which means that you're going to be future ready. You have a multidisciplinary uh, approach to everything. And then you will also work and learn on your own terms. You're your own boss. It's an environment where you value uh, experience rather than uh, uh, the economies that govern these. So people do not work on their ideas because there's a good return on investment as economies dictate, but it is because you're passionate about your idea. It is because you're, you want to see your idea take flight. So that is where a maker stands out. And 
I guess if, if you had to take one thing uh, today from this talk, I hope this quick talk would have inspired you to even look at this movement to join, and then you will find the maker in you. Thank you.